Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't have been more moved by Gary's presentation. <laughs> what a cup of coffee wake up Gary Shapiro is. <laughs> In case you didn't miss his many important points, I will now repeat his entire speech off the teleprompter. I have to confess I am not here to promote that movie or to curry favor with the executives at Sony. Oh no, I'm here simply because of Betamax regret. I went VHS. What a fool I was. What a different world this would have been had I only been one of the 600 people that bought Betamaxes back in the day. What was I doing thinking that the television was better than Atari? I have no voice or vision when it comes to consumer electronics. I'm a dope. I bought a TV from RCA in 1974. This is how bad I was. I went to laser discs, and not the ones that are read by lasers. No, the ones that actually played by a stylus. I have a garage full of them, and they're all for sale on eBay, 50 cents a piece. Now, before I begin, the impromptu words that have been written for me by a lowly Sony marketing executive. <laughs> Let me say that the first Sony product I ever saw was a massive, actually, quote unquote, portable reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder the size of a Singer's sewing machine. Oh, gosh, did I want one of those, but I couldn't afford the 120 bucks. No, so what I did was instead saved up and eventually bought my girlfriend's old Sony Trinitron. And there began my adventures with Sony. It was nothing but Sony there. I began to store a, a shelving system. Old Sony products began to hold new Sony products. Up and up and up it went. So now I have such a stack of old televisions, recording devices, games, uh, clock radios, that my Bluetooth video player sits eight feet above my kitchen sofa. I have to point up like this and wait for the 40 seconds for the damn thing to boot up. Now, on with the scripted portion of our program, and I guarantee you, I have not memorized these words. I was seven years old the first time I saw a motion picture on the big screen. It was called Scream of Fear. It was exactly the kind of movie that led to a rating system that said seven years old should not see movies called Scream of Fear. To this day, Scream of Fear still haunts me, and gosh, I sure love every minute of the night terrors it brings to me and my family. Isn't that the bargain we all make with entertainment? Sometimes it scares us, sometimes it inspires us, and sometimes it makes us think. And almost always, it makes us dream. Scary, spooky, Scream of Fear dreams. When it wasn't the movies, it was my sister's clock radio with its tiny speaker, made by GE, waiting to hear the Beatles or the Dave Clark Five shake, rattle, and roll my world. Now, whether you were seven or 17 or 37, in your imagination, you could be an artist, a rock star, an actor, a director, a writer, or a superhero. And when things got especially dark, say 1963, or 1968, or 1973, or 1978, or 1983, or 1988, it was the movies and music and TV that helped us move beyond our sadness and fear and brought joy. That was what it was like to be seven back then. Today, if you dream of being a rock star, an actor, a director, a writer, all you need to do is turn around a one-inch camera on yourself and broadcast it out to the world. And what a gem of a program that must be. That's because all of you, the evil geniuses of the Consumer Electronics Association, you people who are the masterminds behind Wallensack and Wang, uh, all of you who have helped make a world we only dreamed about just, oh, 10 years ago, a reality. Everywhere I turn in this world, I see the name Sony. Sony, Sony, Sony. I show up on the set, and there it is on the camera. Sony, really? I have yet to see that. Uh, I go into <laughs> post-production. Post <laughs> uh, they write the lies, but I tell the truth. I go into post-production. <laughs> And there it is on the editing decks, Sony. I think I saw that. I turn on a play screen, and there it is, Sony, in high definition, on which I watch a show produced by Sony. Damn, they're taking over my world. 
I unload, download a few books onto my digital reader, the uh, Sony digital reader. <laughs> which is a fine product in its own right. And I go to the movies, and gosh, what do I see? Sony. I play games, I download music, I record videos, I shoot photos. Sony, 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 even when I fire up my computer. I should have read this before I came out today. What it means is that Sony is in a unique position to create great user experiences for everybody who wants to be entertained like me and you. At the center of it all is Sir Howard Stringer, who is in fact an old buddy. When I first met Howard, he was a documentary filmmaker, wickedly successful, raking in the bucks like no documentary filmmaker ever has. In fact, the question was once asked, Sir Howard, is that your Bentley parked outside? Is that the film, the documentary filmmaker's Bentley? <laughs> Oops, no it wasn't. It belonged to the circus clown who was working a birthday party next door. <laughs> Thankfully, wait, wait, oh okay, we'll skip that, that's fine. God bless you, mighty. Look, I look at the teleprompter and it's Sony teleprompters. Uh, please welcome my friend, a person who, if Bluetooth works out, will be known as Lord Howard Stringer. Howard Stringer. Here he is. Truth will set you free. Thank you, yes. <laughs> let's just walk back and forth as much as possible. Because look, there's a, well, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten teleprompters. Thank you, LG. <laughs> I took a risk. <laughs> it failed. But we'll still be friends at least until after the movie. That footage you just watched is obviously from Angels and Demons, Sony Pictures Entertainment's follow-up to the global smash, The Da Vinci Code. It opens in May and obviously we're excited. It is also my excuse for inviting Tom back to CES because you liked him so much the last time. That's right, and also because you keep writing it into my contract. <laughs> Oh, hell, we hey, take... Hey, I gotta tell you. Tell me what? <laughs> no, no, go ahead. That's my, that's my witty joke. Oh, I see, I missed that one, yes. yes. Well, anyway, <laughs> next time. Hey, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. When I first met Tom in the early 80s, he was in a movie dating a mermaid. Indeed. He's always known how to create a big splash. A groan is as good as a laugh. And I can't... I can't complain because I wrote that. <laughs> the last time I saw him, and this is true, he was underwater again in an Italian fountain filming Angels and Demons. Are you a Pisces, Tom? No, but move right. Glasses demo. <laughs> uh, I'm whatever Sony wants me to be today, Howard. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad someone is. So these, these are special glasses, very special glasses, are a prototype of what we're developing in our labs. When wearing them, and I'm gonna have to take my glasses, probably can't read a prompter after this. Whoops. I'm gonna put these suckers on. When wearing these glasses, you can actually watch a movie and watch Tom Hanks at the same time. <clears throat> that's be that's be beginning to be a dubious privilege. Whatever, what it... <laughs> Not since Gary Shapiro as Groucho have I been so entertained. <laughs> so you weren't out of character today so far, Tom. Anyway, we've never had anything like this prototype before. Jimmy, I'm thinking of giving you another man. Howard puts on glasses this to watch, watch the, the screen. screen. Which I'm doing. 
Yes. And everyone can see on the big screen, it can see you while also watching one of your movies. Tom, why don't, to hell with it, why don't you try this? I think I have to. <laughs> By the way, these glasses made you look 15 years younger. <laughs> oh, look, they're so cool and hip. This means I can watch myself in a movie that I made 17 years ago on the small screen and realize how old I am now. <laughs> I'm moving slowly in order for the background to match up. Look how realistic and lifelike it is. Howard, I'm matching you up with my own eyes. There's Gary Marshall. Penny Marshall. In other words, I've only worked with people from Happy Days. <laughs> These are still being perfected in Sony Labs, and they will have even more features than today. You mean they're going to get even better than they are now? They are going to get wonderful. I think these are the best glasses Sony's ever made. <laughs> Tom will send you a pair when they're ready. <laughs> oh, I'll be checking the FedEx. Thank you, Howard. <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> Would you mind taking that hold off my paycheck for Angels and Demons now? <laughs> I'm, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Sony Pictures Entertainment's Angels and Demons comes to a theater near you in May, and you can see more exclusive footage from it at the Sony booth at CES. Ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable Tom Hanks. Oh, I'm being banished now. <laughs> Thank you. I'm exiting stage left. I'm being sucked into a vortex. <laughs> Howard, save me. I feel, I feel the evil forces of Samsung pulling me deeper and deeper. <laughs> oh no, don't banish me to the Casio hell hole. Oh, gotta, look, I apologize. I don't want to live by Sanyo's rules anymore. Howard, save me. You're a knight, for God's sakes. 